we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, again, my name is Stephanie Carpenter. I'm the program manager for the ICPSR Summer Program, if you've just joined us. Uh, my co-host today is going to be Scott Campbell. He is the communications coordinator for the ICPSR Summer Program, and we are all delighted to have you here. So let me get my slides shared with you all. All right, Scott, could you tell me if everyone can see the slides? Yes. All right, all right, let's go ahead. Welcome to the ICPSR Data Fair presentation, the ICPSR Summer Program 2025 and beyond. So today we are going to introduce you to the Summer Program and talk about our history. We're going to talk about our curriculum as well, which broadly breaks down into two categories, our topical workshops and our general sessions. Uh, we'll discuss our prospective fees and discounts for 2025, as well as on-campus housing for in-person participants who will attend the general sessions. We'll talk about the scholarships that we offer, as well as uh, the opportunity to apply to be a teaching assistant in the ICPSR summer program. And then we'll have time for a Q&A at the end of the presentation. And again, you're welcome to submit questions at any point during the presentation. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to the summer program staff, the administrative staff. We are busy year round setting up and preparing for the ICPSR summer program. Um, we have just begun preparations for 2025. You'll see all of this listed here. Um, the first on your left is Rob Franzese, the summer program director. Uh, Rob is a professor in political science at the University of Michigan here in Ann Arbor, where he's the director of the program in international and comparative studies. His research uh, interests center on the comparative and international interest of political economies and uh, developed democracies and related aspects of empir uh, empirical methodology. And he has been teaching in the ICPSR summer program for a good number of years. Um, I'm Stephanie Carpenter, the program manager. Uh, Scott Campbell is also joining us today, our communica uh, communications coordinator. Uh, Leah Trapaize is our administrative assistant who helps with instructor payments. Laura Zimmerman uh, is our administrative assistant who helps with a number of different uh, tasks and responsibilities in order to get the summer program uh, off the ground and running. And then Sandy Zalmut is uh, the Associate Director of Membership here at ICPSR, and she also helps uh, run the technical side of the summer program. So about us, uh, the ICPSR summer program goes back to 1963. Uh, back then, there was an increasing interest and need for quantitative analysis among social scientists. Uh, and at that time, there was a lack of faculty who were te uh, teaching social methodology at academic institutions across the U.S. Uh, at that time, there were also a lot of self-taught practitioners of research who wanted uh, and needed to gain more formal training in what they were doing. So in 1962, a uh, political scientist named Warren Miller uh, worked to create ICPSR or ICPR as it was known back then in order to share data from the American National Election Study, uh, which continues to this day. And then a year later, after creating ICPR, uh, the summer program was launched with the aim of training social scientists uh, across the nation in elementary research methods and survey research, as well as more uh, at the time advanced analytic techniques. Um, this photo that you see here on the slide is of the very first summer program. Uh, Warren Miller is going to be in the bottom left corner wearing the white shirt and the black bow tie. Uh, the first summer program was attended by about 21 faculty members and 41 graduate students. Um, it has grown since then over the last six decades, um, as well as ICPSR. The number of participants that we train every year has grown to about 1,000 individuals every summer. Um, the um, individuals who attend are more diverse, as are the offerings um, and courses that we offer every summer. Um, and as we've grown, we've um, established ourselves as one of the top training centers around the world um, for quantitative methods. 
um, since the beginning. Um, we estimate that we have trained about um, probably over 25,000 individuals from all around the world. So we have a big alumni group. So uh, what makes the summer program unique or different from other training uh, programs that you can find out there? Um, it starts with our comprehensive curriculum. Every summer we offer about, uh, offer about 100 courses on a variety of topics. Our curriculum is designed to meet the needs of students, faculty, scholars, and um, applied practitioners of all different skill levels um, from beginning to advanced, as well as um, from all different educational backgrounds and disciplines. Our curriculum starts at the beginning with a course in introductory statistics. And from there, our participants can move on to regression analysis, MLE, categorical. Uh, we offer introductory to advanced courses in a variety of statistical and quantitative methods, um, as well as other methods, including Bayes, network analysis. Um, and then we also offer courses in machine learning, text analysis, data science, and even some qualitative and mixed methods as well. Uh, finally, we offer both in-person and online training opportunities so that we can meet you where you are. Um, we are special in that our courses are going to feature dynamic training from leading experts. Um, the instruction that you get in our courses is in-depth, it's applied, and it's going to be responsive to your specific research needs and goals. In many of our courses, you are welcome to bring and use your own data. As for our instructors, our faculty include more than 100 practitioners and educators from universities and institutions across the US and around the world. These folks are at the top of their game, uh, both substantively and pedagogically. Uh, they are conducting and publishing research in respected academic journals, um, so not only are they experts in their field, um, but they're also top-notch instructors who are skillful at teaching participants of all different backgrounds uh, how to understand and employ the methods in their own research. Our instructors are really um, careful and thoughtful to take the time to explain the mathematical theories as well um, behind the methods and then dem uh, demonstrate those methods in real-world applications. Our instructors invite questions in class and afterwards. Um, the result of all of this is going to be a very supportive and encouraging learning environment that's going to feature a lot of one-on-one -on -one guidance from your instructor and feedback from them as well. Um, but in addition to that, um, in addition to the uh, instruction that you're going to get from our uh, instructors, we believe that learning is a very uh, collaborative process um, between you and other individuals. So our courses um, online and in person uh, often feature opportunities for group learning and uh, making connections and networking. Our participants, like I said earlier, um, feature about a thousand people from all around the world. They represent a wide range of institutions, disciplines and backgrounds. In our courses, there are going to be opportunities to meet and connect with people from your field. Um, a few years ago, I was speaking with a former participant about networking opportunities, and he said that at the ICPSR summer program, you have the chance to meet researchers who are working in your same field or discipline, um, but who are at other institutions around the country or world and see how they are approaching um, similar res research questions to your own. Um, in addition to that, um, there are also a lot of chances for inter uh, interdisciplinary connections and insights as well. Um, we've heard throughout the years um, when we attend conferences or when we have participants come back, a lot of people tell us that um, at the summer program, um, they ended up meeting people who became um, a research collaborator a, or a co-author um, in addition to lifelong friend. So let's move on to talking about our curriculum, um, and we will begin with a deeper dive into our topical workshops. Um, so every year from May through August, we will offer um, between 40 and 50 topical workshops. Our topical workshops provide rigorous and very focused training in a specific methodological technique. Um, typical workshops um, that we offer every year include group-based trajectory modeling for the medical and social sciences, interactive visualization, dashboards and apps with R and Shiny, introduction to network analysis, item response theory, machine learning, 
causal inference, multi-level modeling, uh, and many more. Our topical workshops feature instruction or contact hours and a quantity of either 20 hours or 40 hours. Uh, these workshops can range in length from several days to two weeks, and most of the workshops meet um, for only about four to five hours daily online, Monday through Friday, with breaks included there. Uh, in 2025, we expect that most of our topical workshops will be offered in an online-only format. So when you participate online, you can choose to live stream the daily workshop uh, lectures via Zoom, um, or you can watch the lecture recordings asynchronously um, at a time that better uh, suits you or you can do both of them. Um, there will, in addition to most of our online workshops, there will be a few what we call dual mode workshops in which you can choose to attend either online or in-person. Uh, our dual mode workshops with an in-person option will be held here in Ann Arbor, Michigan on the University of Michigan campus. So you would travel here and sit in a classroom with the instructor and other participants, as well as people who are attending online live via Zoom. With all of our topical workshops, regardless of the format, uh, they are going to feature extended access to the lecture recordings and the workshop materials through December 31st of each year. So you might be wondering who attends uh, a topical workshop. Uh, participants in these workshops are mostly advanced graduate students, postdocs, faculty, and then other applied practitioners or researchers. Uh, enrollment in our workshops and each workshop is typically capped at about 25 uh, people per workshop. In addition to our topical workshops on specific methods, we also offer what we call sponsored topical workshops. Um, these uh, tend to focus on and explore a specific substantive topic or a specific data set. Um, Past examples include uh, the population assessment of tobacco and health or the PATH study, the panel study of income dynamics or the PSID study, uh, which is a longitudinal study measuring economic, social, and health factors over the life course of families, and then the Monitoring the Future Project or MTF, which measures uh, drug and alcohol use and related attitudes among adolescent students nationwide. Uh, these sponsored workshops are typically offered by an archive or a project here at ICPSR and tend to be free to attend uh, for admitted participants. Um, sponsored workshops typically include a competitive application process and review process. Uh, we post these workshops on our topical workshop schedule in addition to all the other ones that carry a fee that we offer. All right, so let's move on to talking about the second half of our curriculum, the general sessions. Our general sessions are a comprehensive methods training program that comprise more than 40 methods courses and math and computing lectures. Our general sessions offer a foundational training and research methods, including computation, formal theory, um, basic statistics and regression analysis, as well as more specialized training in a diverse array of the most advanced cutting edge methodological techniques this includes machine learning, text analysis, network analysis, and more. Every year we offer two general sessions. Um, we have tentatively um, come up with the dates for our 2025 session. We just haven't widely announced them yet. Um, we expect the first session next summer to run from Monday, June 9th through Thursday, July 3rd. And then our second session will begin the week following and run from Monday, July 7th through Friday, August 1st, 2025. So I wanna talk about registration for the general sessions. So when you register for a session, one or both of them, you're going to pay a flat fee for that session. And then uh, you can sign up for as many, um, I'm sorry, you can sign up uh, for up to four methods courses within that session. So it's kind of like um, what we call buffet pricing. The price is going to be the same no matter, um, no matter how many methods courses you want to take. Um, each general session has uh, 16 methods courses and then uh, additional math and computing lectures. Um, and you can take as many math and computing lectures as you want. Um, with this kind of broad array of courses, you get the chance to pick the courses that you want and customize 
your own schedule based on your um, previous training and then your current research needs or uh, needs or future goals. Uh, you can register, like I said, for one or both sessions. You aren't required to attend the first session in order to attend the second session. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about our general session courses and lectures. Um, all of our general session courses and classes will be held in person and online. The in-person courses will be held uh, once again on the University of Michigan campus in Ann Arbor. And then for online participants, you can choose to stream the lectures live via Zoom, or you can watch the lecture uh, recordings asynchronously later. Um, I've mentioned we have courses and lectures. Um, we categorize um, those that way because courses, our methods courses, feature a full semester's worth of intensive instruction and in specific quantitative methods. Um, so that's going to equal about 40 uh, instructional hours over three weeks. Uh, those are our methods courses. And then our math and computing lectures provide about a half semester's worth or 20 hours of supplementary training in math, calculus, as well as um, computing software like R and Python. Uh, once again, in each session, you can sign up for uh, up to four methods courses um, plus unlimited lectures. Our math and computing lectures are going to meet daily, Monday through Friday, for the first week of each session. And then the methods courses will meet daily, Monday through Friday, for the last three weeks of each session. This way, uh, you'll get a chance to learn the computing skills and math knowledge that you need to know before beginning your methodological training. Each of our sessions, kind of alluded, uh, offers a mix of introductory and advanced courses. Um, and we also sequence, sequence introductory uh, to advanced training across the sessions so that if you wanna take an introductory course in Bayes or network analysis in the first session, you can follow that up with an advanced course in the second session on Bayes or a network analysis. Um, you're able to make changes to your session schedule after each session has begun. We offer a few days um, to add and drop courses um, when the session has started. And then you also get the chance to meet um, virtually or online with um, one of our instructors who can provide you with some course counseling and kind of help walk you through all the courses that we offer and give you some feedback about what would best suit your needs. Um, for all of our general session classes, there are no enrollment caps, so you don't need to worry a bit about being shut out of a class or at filling. Uh, and then as with our topical workshops, all of our general session classes are going to have extended access to the Zoom lecture recordings and all the class materials through December 31st. Um, to talk briefly about the instructional staff, um, outside of the daily class meetings, all of our instructors and TAs will hold daily office hours. So that's in addition to the lecturing that they'll be doing each day. Um, and we really encourage, encourage all of our participants, whether you're in person or online, to go to the office hours for your TAs and instructors and ask questions about what it is that you're learning in their course. Or you're even just welcome to go and talk about your own research and get feedback about that. Some of our participants say they go to their um, instructor's office hours just because they want to talk about their dissertation. Um, our instructors welcome those kinds of interactions and are always kind of willing to help. Um, our participants and eager to kind of share their knowledge and get to know others. So who attends our general sessions and why? Most of our participants are going to be graduate students, including masters and PhDs. Uh, they attend for a variety of reasons. Um, they tell us that they come because they want to beef up on their statistics skills before starting a graduate program. Uh, or they want to take courses that are not offered at their home institution. Some tell us that they need to take a course that will help them with their dissertation. And then some say they just they're, you know, they want to have the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to use the summer to learn a semester's worth of material in only four to eight weeks. Our general session participants uh, also include advanced undergraduate students and postdocs, as well as faculty, professors, researchers, who have been out of school for years or decades, but who are seeking to relearn uh, a certain technique or expand their, um, their skill set. 
Our participants um, in our general sessions come from more than 40 different countries and represent more than 30 disciplines, including political science, sociology, education, uh, law, engineering, social work, journalism, and the environmental sciences. And then in each general session, we have about 300 participants. Um, one question we get from people when they're registering is, should I attend in person or online? And we kind of have to explain the different advantages to each format, um, but the choice is really going to be yours depending on your circumstances. Online participation um, is going to be well suited to those with families, work, or other obligations that are going to prevent them from traveling to Ann Arbor for four to eight weeks. Online participants will still have access to all of the course lectures and other course materials uh, during the course and then after it ends as well. Our online participants can also meet with their instructors and TAs in the daily office hours via Zoom. And then our online participants also get the chance to know their fellow attendees through our Slack channel and other virtual meeting groups that participants organize. Um, there are a lot of benefits for in-person participants. When you attend in person, um, you have the opportunity to focus on your um, summer program courses and shut out distractions much better than you were um, than if you were at home. By coming to Ann Arbor, you're really able to uh, prioritize your learning in a way that many of our virtual participants um, tell us that they struggle to do because they just haven't kind of created the buffer between them and the rest of their lives. Um, if you're in person, we offer a lot of social events for in-person participants, including our weekly coffee and donuts meetup, our uh, Tidy Tuesday, our networking lunch and picnics. You'll see a common thing. We like to theme. We like to give food um, and provide food to people. Um, and then in addition to the kind of formal summer program events, um, many of our um, participants organize their own study groups with each other and uh, organize social plans uh, in the evenings and on weekends. Um, it's countless kind of the number of people who have attended um, the general sessions in person and told us that it's kind of just like a, a fun statistics camp um, in which they get to spend day after day getting to know um, what, what they call other data nerds. How, that's how they refer to themselves. Uh, so many of our participants come and take the general sessions and end up meeting instructors or TAs who become their mentors or other participants who become their lifelong friends and research collaborators. So if you have the opportunity to come in person, we really encourage you to as well. Uh, so we provide, um, we make on-campus housing available um, for uh, participants in our first and second general sessions. The housing is in a student dorm located, uh, located on the University of Michigan Central Campus. So you're going to be within walking distance of all of your general session classes. Um, we are very pleased to offer a discount, a 10% discount on your general session registration fee uh, if you purchase on-campus housing through UM. Um, this is just kind of an extra incentive to um, help you get here and join us in person. Um, summer program participants who live on campus will be grouped together uh, on the same floors of the dorm, which gives um, them another chance to get to know each other and spend time together. Um, living on campus is uh, a great opportunity to connect and network with fellow summer program participants outside of class. Uh, the rooms are singles, meaning you wouldn't share it, and they are air conditioned. Um, the room will come with a bed, linens, a dresser, desk, and chair. And then um, on each floor, there is a community bathroom, and the bathrooms are separated by gender. So even if you're living on a hall um, that has um, both genders, um, the bathrooms will be separated by gender. And then the dorm also has gender-neutral restrooms as well. Uh, we don't yet have the um, housing rates for 2025, but I can tell you that in 2024, this past summer, the rate for a single room uh, on campus was approximately $57 a night. And I do want to note that um, this on-campus housing fee um, is not included in the general session registration fee that I'll get to in a little bit. It's separate. Uh, the dorm will um, have a community kitchen. So 
You can uh, cook meals in the dorm if you'd like, um, or you can also purchase a meal plan for a separate charge, and you can eat in the campus dining hall or at other restaurants and commercial food vendors across campus. If you live on campus and housing, you'll have automatic access to the UM campus recreational facilities and gyms for no additional charge. Um, but unfortunately, uh, on-campus parking is not available if you live in the dorm. Um, our recommendation, if you're able to, is to live in the on-campus housing because it's convenient and reliable. Um, but if it's not something that you want to do, um, we can also provide resources for locating off-campus housing on your own if you prefer. So let's talk about registration and fees for the 2025 program. Uh, registration for all classes, both our topical workshops and the general sessions will open in early February, 2025. I expect that we will um, begin posting uh, our course offerings and schedules beginning in January of 2025. Um, regarding registration deadlines, there are going to be those for both the topical workshops and the general sessions. Um, these can range from kind of three days to one week before a workshop or a general session is scheduled to begin, and we'll clearly post um, in our registration portal when the deadline is. But we also encourage people not to wait until the last possible day to register um, first because there are incentives to registering early. We offer an early payment discount on registration fees for our general sessions, and then most likely in 2025, we will also have um, an early payment discount for our topical workshops as well. And these um, discounts will give you the chance to save um, hundreds of dollars on your register uh, registration fees if you register before a specific date. Um, and then with our topical workshops, like I said earlier, um, many of these have enrollment caps. So if you wait until kind of too close before the registration deadline, you might find that um, enrollment for the class is actually full and you're not able to get a seat in it. And that would be for the topical workshops only. So let's talk about registration fees. Um, you probably know that ICPSR is a consortium with more than 800 members. Um, these members include um, universities, foundations, uh, government institutions, nonprofits, and more. So if you are a current student, faculty, staff, or researcher at an ICPSR member institution, you are going to qualify for the discounted registration fee for participants from ICPSR member institutions. You see that listed there on the table on the slide. So we uh, do have two separate fees for members versus non-members. Um, this registration fee chart that you see here uh, lists our 2024 uh, prices. Um, we will post our 2025 prices um, in the next month or two, sometime this fall. I expect that our 2025 uh, fees may increase, um, but we will announce those as soon as we have them. Um, and then I want to say that registration fees for the general sessions might seem a little confusing when you look at it. So I'm just going to kind of try to help break it down. Um, so basically, what you first need to do is determine if you are affiliated with a member or a non-member institution. And then um, you'll want to decide if you want to want to attend a single general session, either the first or the second, or if you want to attend both sessions. And then you'll just want to make sure that you register and pay uh, for the general sessions before May 1st so that you can get that early payment discount. Because after May 1st or beginning on May 1st, our general session fees are going to increase by several hundred dollars. Um, as for topical workshops, the registration fees are going to be determined by the approximate number of instructional or contact hours that the workshop delivers. So as I said earlier, some workshops deliver 20 contact hours and some deliver 40 contact hours. When you look at our, um, our schedule, the number of contact hours for each web, uh, workshop is gonna be listed in the description. Um, we like to help make our courses more affordable and offer discounts. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities to save money on your registration fees. Um, a final reminder that we offer the early payment discount um, on our general session fees and then also um, probably for our topical workshops in 2025. Um, we offer a discount for returning summer program participants. So if you attended the ICPSR summer program um, in a previous year, 
um, you are eligible to receive a 15% discount off your registration fee in the 2025 uh, ICPSR summer program. Um, we offer the 10% housing discount on our general sessions if you purchase on-campus housing. And then we offer what we call the multiple enrollment discount, where if you register for two or more of our topical workshops or a topical workshop in a general session, you will get 15% uh, off your total registration fees. And then finally, if you would like to bring three or more of your closest friends from your academic department, we have a discount for that as well. Um, our group discount for academic departments or programs um, is uh, for those who send four or more participants. Um, this discount can be used for either the general sessions or the topical workshops or both. Um, the group discount um, is tiered or graduated and ranges from 10 to 25%. And it increases, the discount increases um, with the more participants that the department sends. Um, if you are eligible for more than one discount, you can combine them as well. Um, we also try to make our courses affordable by waiving the registration fees entirely via our scholarships. Uh, every year, we offer more than um, $150,000 in student scholarships. Uh, our goal with this is to remove financial barriers to participation and increase access to statistical methods training for students of all different backgrounds. This last summer in 2024, we awarded more than 90 scholarships. The scholarships from ICPSR provide registration fee waivers to our general sessions. And then one of the scholarships, the ON, provides a registration fee waiver to uh, a topical workshop. Regarding the eligibility criteria, um, our scholarships are targeted towards students, including undergraduates, masters, and PhDs in specific disciplines. So those include sociology, political science, public policy, education, quantitative history, and several other disciplines. And a few of our scholarships, um, in addition to being open to students, are also open to pre-tenure scholars and early career academics. Another big subset of scholarships that we offer are our diversity scholarships for graduate students from underrepresented groups who are about to enter or are currently enrolled in graduate programs. Um, our diversity scholarships include free on-campus housing, meals, and a stipend in addition to the registration fee waiver. All of our scholarships are going to be open to international students. And then each of our scholarships is going to have its own set of eligibility uh, criteria. So you'll want to make sure that you read the description for each to see if you are eligible to apply. You can apply to more than one ICPSR, uh, ICPSR scholarship. Um, you're welcome to apply for any and all for which you're eligible for, but you're going to need to submit separate applications for each scholarship. And you can use, um, many people ask us, can we use the same letter of recommendations? For different scholarships, sure, not a problem. So in order to uh, apply, um, you're going to need to fill out our application form through our online scholarship application manager and then submit all of the required documents through that as well. In most instance, uh, instances, um, the materials that are required include a CV, a cover letter, uh, and a letter of recommendation. Our 2025 application window dates are um, to be announced, but I expect that we will begin accepting applications in late January with uh, an application deadline in late February of 2025. Uh, and I just wanna emphasize that um, these scholarships can be life-changing, um, career-changing. Our goal here is to help students to uh, be able to attend who otherwise wouldn't be able to because of financial limitations. So if this is you, um, and you don't have the, uh, the funds to attend on your own, or if you don't have department support, um, please apply. Or if you know of students for whom these scholarships would make a big difference, we encourage you to share news of this opportunity and have them apply as well. All right, um, we're about to wrap it up, but before we do, let's talk about our TA positions. Um, the ICPSR summer program is very happy to offer teaching assistant positions for graduate students. 
Um, our TA positions provide invaluable uh, pedagogical experience for grad students um, to take into future teaching positions at colleges and universities. This is a really terrific opportunity, opportunity to work alongside a summer program instructor and also to meet, um, to meet and connect with a diverse international um, constituency of our participants. Some of our TAs also go on to become summer program instructors. So there's always that chance as well. Uh, every summer we have uh, about 40 or more TA openings that we need to fill. Uh, TAs um, will be assigned to assist with um, one methods course per general session. Uh, our TAs are expected to work in person in Ann Arbor. Um, we don't have virtual or remote TA opportunities, unfortunately. Um, TAs will be expected to work up to 40 hours a week during the session uh, that their class is scheduled. And the compensation for next summer will be um, a little more than $39 an hour. The typical responsibilities include assisting the instructors with preparation and presentation of the class materials and lecture, uh, meeting with the workshop instructors, attending the daily class lectures and answering participant questions in person or via Zoom, holding the office hours, holding lab sessions or other supplementary uh, learning sessions, and then evaluating the work and grading assignments. We are finalizing our qualifications for 2025, but I expect they'll look similar to um, what we expected in 2024, um, which included being currently enrolled in a PhD program, having a master's degree or equivalent combination of education and experience, having experience with quantitative research skills, experience with statistical computing software, excellent communication skills, both oral and written, uh, written um, good interpersonal skills, uh, past experience as a TA in a stats course, and the knowledge and command of the skills and material that's going to be relevant to the course that you want to assist with. Um, the materials that you'll need to submit will include a uh, cover letter, CV, letters of recommendation, um, past course evaluations, and then a course trans transcript as well. We will post um, the positions in early January, 2025, and they'll be posted um, to the University of Michigan Careers website and you will apply through there. So if you'd like to learn more, um, go to our website or email us um, and you can um, see uh, our schedule that we offered in 2024. And this will give you a good sense of the courses that we will offer again in 2025. Um, and you can also check out our scholarships and the criteria there um, and just kind of learn more about what the summer program is like. So I'm going to close out of my presentation and we can go ahead and start answering questions. All right, Scott, how are we looking? We're looking great. Okay. Um, we have one question asking, are scholarships available to international attendees? Yes, um, I, I'm pretty sure that all of our scholarships are um, open to international uh, students. Um, and that could be if you are attending um, a university uh, overseas, not in the US, or if you are an international student here in the US as well. Um, but as I said earlier, it's definitely best to check the eligibility criteria for each scholarship. But yep, um, we typically don't restrict applications to uh, domestic uh, students only. We didn't have any other questions. I don't know if you wanted to talk for a minute about the other perk that TAs get about um, registration. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so TAs who um, assist with one of our general session courses are also, um, as Scott said, given a great perk where they are allowed to register to take um, a general session methods course of their choosing. It has to be within the session that they're teaching. Um, and participation in that course, of course, can't conflict with any of your required responsibilities as a TA. Um, but a lot of our TAs find that um, they're able to either maybe watch the lecture recordings in the evenings, or they'll have access like all of our participants after the session has ended. So that's a really nice perk of the job is that you get to take a class in addition to serving as a TA.
All I don't right. see any other questions. All right. Well, I, it's, it's been a delight to talk about the summer program. And um, if you do have additional follow-up questions, please reach out to us via email, um, visit our website, and we hope to welcome you um, or your colleagues or students to the summer program in 2025. So that concludes our presentation for today and um, wishing you a, a lovely rest of your data fair experience here at ICPSR. All right, well, we'll see you later.